I was asked about uh, how do you do API testing with uh, Cypress and it seems people are confused between two terms request and intercept so don't worry in this video I'm going to show you how you can use them and what are the main differences and as a test site we're going to use automation in testing online so let's have a look in the code so to begin with, we just have a simple test about request or intercept. And what we're doing is opening this URL right here. And if we run our um, test, we should see the page opening. Now, I know for a fact that this page does have an API and that API fills the rooms. You can have multiple rooms here depending on um, well what your what the API delivers us. So let's have a look um, what API is called. So for that we're just going to open our um, Chrome, going to open our developer tools, going to, going, to, going to go to network and let's just refresh the page. And if you refresh the page and go to fetch um, we see here we have two requests, one for branding and one for rooms. So if we hover over the rooms one, we see we have one room which has this information right here. So room ID, room name, type is single, we have this text, we have this uh, image, it has accessibility, we have description and a price. Good. Now. Can we call this um, endpoint right here also in, in Cyprus? Well, of course we can. So how do we do that? Well, in order to call, so to call uh, an endpoint, we will use ci.request. And if we do just this. So do, we do CI the request and then we give the endpoint and we run our test again. We don't see we don't see any difference. We see we had the visit, but we do not see anything else. Okay, seems pretty strange. Did it actually run? Well, let's let's see if it ran. Um, and to see that, we're going to do the following. So after our ci.request, we're going to say then. And in the then, we're going to take the response that we got before. And in that response, we're just going to, um, we're just actually just going to, to lock that, um, that response. Okay, okay. And we can do that really nicely by doing ci.log. And let's do just response.body. And if we run this, let's see what we get. And we have the log here and we got rooms object. We cannot do a lot with this rooms object. But if we change this one to JSON stringify and then we give it the response body there. And then if we run this, we should see our response in a JSON format. So we get the same thing. We get the rooms, rooms ID, name, and all of the other information. So you can, of course, um, call your endpoint with a method. So if you use ci.requests and you want to um, to see the method, you can do the longer form of request. So the default form, the one that we have right here, has get by default. But if you want, you have ci. So we have requests. By the way, I have a video if you want to use this plugin, which allows you to type or autocomplete fast different Cypress uh, methods. So we have the longer or the um, full version 
and here we give it a method. We still have the get method. We just give it uh, there and the URL. And if we copy um, this uh, this piece um, right here. So if we run this, we should have a second log. And there we have it, log one and log number two. Now, besides seeing, right? I mean, um, we see that we can call an endpoint, but we want to do things with the endpoint as well. So we can use assertions on our response. So we can, for example, say we expect, um, we expect the response status to, I don't know, to equal our standard 200. And let's run this right here. And we have the assertion in, uh, in place. We can also have a look inside. So we can, with requests, query and check that certain text is present. So if we would like to, I don't know, to check the room name, we need in this case to be a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say creative, but we need to, to, um, um, to know what is the path. So we, in the response body, we're checking the response and its body. And there we have the rooms object. And we want the first room, right? And for that, we want the room name. And we want that to, to equal, what was the name again? One room 101. OK. So if we run this, we should have it right there. Now, we can, of course, use the uh, assertion not only on the complete form, but also right here, also on this form. And let's do here, do we do 204 and here we do like, I don't know, 500. And we should have two tests that passed and two tests that failed. Nice, one test that failed, so it stopped it now tracks. By the way, I have a video also regarding this, how you can have your uh, test show expected and actual result. Now, okay, let's change this to 101 and this one to 200. And if we run it again, all should pass. Now, this is how, or well, this is how you use the requests. Requests are used to call an endpoint, call an API endpoint and perform different checks on it. It doesn't really matter um, if you call it um, here or before the visit. So if I would do this, if I would take away the visit and I would run our test, I don't have anything right here because there's nothing uh, that Cypress loaded, but I do have our check still. So even though we didn't load the page, we still were able to call the API and to perform our endpoint checks. Now with intercept, it is a little bit different. So <clears throat> let's um, let's see what I mean. So let's see here we have uh, intercept. I can try and do the same. So instead of doing ci.request, I can try and do ci.intercept. And in the set of intercept, I can try and just give it the same path. So I can just give it this one right here. And let's see what this will do for us. So if we run this test, so both our tests have passed. But if we make it so that we do not run this one, and let's just make it smaller. And we run the test right now. 
we still have our intercept that ran. Um, and if we check the routes, we have the method. So we're checking for um, this route right here. And we found nothing. So no response that was made in the application could be found. What about if we do ci.visit and we input the um, URL that we want to visit. And if we run this, our intercept was done. We see the page and if we check the routes, we have one request that matched. Good. <clears throat> so, what does this um, what does this do for us? What can we do with this um, with this intercept? Well, um, we can actually um, try and manipulate what we get from the rooms. So, how do we do that? Well. Um, we go um, right here in the intercept and we define a little bit more information. So we can say we want um, we want to give back some rooms and those rooms should uh, look something like this and we can just copy paste what we had um, what we had before the format that we had before and this is what we had the room um, ID the room name and if we run this this should not have any impact on what we see okay we have a, a room same one so um, same information However, if we go here and say, I don't description, rest the test, and we say room ID, I don't know, 50, and room name 505, <coughs> and we put this accessibility to false. Now, what would happen if we run this test right now? Let's just save it and we run it and if we check here okay we have a room which is named raster test it's a single room we have don't have the accessibility there nice right now we can even go further and say well we just want an empty rooms object and i think you guessed what will happen here if we run the test and we check our page, we have no rooms. Nice, right? So we can control what the application shows in this case. Now, one important question here, what would happen if we take this request right here and we perform that test? I mean, normally this should fail, right? Because we have the rooms which are empty. So it would be impossible to get a room that has um, the name 101 because we have no rooms. Well, let's double check. And it seems to have passed. Now, why did it pass? Well, the answer is it passed because if you call directly the API endpoint, you still get the normal information that is in the database. However, the front end, because we use intercept and because we change the message, um, shows something else. So using intercept, you can basically mock your responses and control what you see in the front end. This is really good when um, you, you want to test different scenarios and you want to influence, we want to see how your front end behaves and those scenarios or that data is not in your um, database. 
Now, there's one other thing which I want to show you regarding ci.intercept. Now, there's another scenario which I want to show you, and for that, I will add here a before each hook. So, in this before each hook, I want to do ci.intercept. So, what will this uh, do? Well, this will run before each of the tests, and I want to show it, or I want it to do the following. I wanted to check um, all of the, um, or I wanted to intercept all of the requests that deliver us some PNG files. And with those requests, um, I wanted to, I, I want to manipulate them basically. So, I want to, to tell it. So what do I want to do here? Well, I want to intercept the PNG requests. And I want to change how or what we see in the front end. So in my case, I did something right here. I have in my fixtures, I have a REST PNG with a smiley face. So I want to make it so that the application shows instead of any PNG, it shows my PNG. So I'm using this request.reply and I'm going to say, uh, I take this fixture right here. And the fixture was named rest.png. So you can take you can take any any file and in the headers I want it to I want to drive uh, headers of type of content um, content type image image png forgot to add here comma that's why it's complaining and if we did everything correctly we should, when we run this test, we should see different images. And if we have a look right here, we have our images. We can, of course, also make it so that we uh, run also the first test, because that should also be influenced. So run, run both tests. So here we have our images. And in here, we have the same roots, and we saw five images, one, two, three, four, five PNGs, which were replaced. So to sum up, you have, on the one hand, you have the request, which you can use to call endpoints and to check the information that they deliver. And you have intercept, which you can use to manipulate the data that is shown in the front end. As always, thank you for watching the video and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye-bye.